Welcome to this HP video discussing the HP Van SDN controller. This video is part of a series of videos discussing the installation and setup of the HP controller. Now on the same page as the page where you download the HP software, there's a really good document which is the installation guide. It's strongly recommended that you read this guide and follow the steps in the guide. This is the installation guide for version 2.5 of the controller. I'm going to download the guide and open it up with Adobe Acrobat. So the various parts to the installation guide. Be careful. Different versions of the controller have different requirements and a different installation process. So you need to look at the installation process for each controller. So be careful. Installation processes may be different. You need to look at the installation process on each version of the controller individually. In this example, we're looking at an installation of an HP Van SDN controller version 2.5. And I'm going to look at a new controller install with a local Keystone server. So once again, first command that we need to type is sudo apt-get update, which is what I did previously. I'll do it again to follow the installation guide. But that is something that we've already done. Next step, sudo apt-get install Python software properties. Say yes for the additional software installation. sudo apt-get install Ubuntu Cloud Keyring. sudo add apt repository cloud archive icehouse. Press enter to continue. sudo apt get update once again. And while that's busy, next command is sudo apt get install keystone. So yes to install keystone. The system connects to the Ubuntu cloud and installs the relevant software. Now I don't want to bore you showing software installing from the Ubuntu cloud, so I'll pause it at this point and I'll show you the results once the software is installed. Okay, so the installation of Keystone has completed. Next step will be to unpack the controller software. That means that we need to download the controller software from the HP website and then upload it to the Ubuntu system. Before I do that, I'm going to shut down the Ubuntu system once again. And I'm going to take another snapshot. So before CTL install, I'll start up the Ubuntu system once again. I'll create a duplicate PuTTY connection. So login is SDN, password is Skyline. So back on the controller. Ubuntu system. Now I need to upload the controller software to the Ubuntu system. Once the controller software has been downloaded, we need to upload it to our Ubuntu server where we're going to install the controller software. So we need to upload this Debian package to the Ubuntu server. There are many secure FTP clients out there but the one I'm going to use for this demonstration is WinSCP. So 
So I'm going to download WinSCP, which is 5.5 meg in size. FileZilla is another popular secure FTP client. However, some people have reported malware as part of the installation file. So in this case, rather than using FileZilla, I'm going to use WinSCP to demonstrate the upload using alternative software. So I'm going to go through the installation wizard. I'm going to use the commander interface and click install. I'm going to launch WinSCP. So under file protocol, I'm going to choose secure FTP. The host name is 192.168.56.93, which is the IP address of the Ubuntu system. Port number is 22. In this case, our username is SDN and the password is Skyline. Click Login. I need to accept the public key from the secure FTP server, so I'm going to click Yes. I'm now connected to Home SDN and from my local machine, I'm going to select the Debian package and I'm going to upload that to the FTP server. So this is taking the Debian package from my Windows machine and uploading it to the Ubuntu system. And as you can see, it's now uploaded. In the PuTTY session, if I type ls, I can see that the Debian package is now uploaded to the server. So we previously installed the prerequisite software and now we need to use this command, sudo dpkg unpack. So sudo dpkg hyphen hyphen unpack hp and I press tab to complete the file hp sdn ctl and in this case it's version 2.5. Hit enter, put in my password of skyline. Now in this example, we told that the hardware platform doesn't meet the minimum requirements for a production deployment. This controller has four cores, but eight are required. This controller has four gig of RAM, but 16 gig is required. This controller has this amount of storage space, but this is required. Now this can be overwritten by creating a blank text file. So by using touch, I can create a blank override.txt file that is also explained in the installation guide so in the installation guide it will tell you that you need to create this blank text file to override the hardware check so now that I've done that I can use the sudo dpkg hyphen hyphen unpack command to unpack the controller software so as you can see, it's creating a user called SDN admin, which is done, and it's processing the triggers. So now we can actually install the controller software. This will install the dependencies and complete the installation. So the command is sudo apt-get install f. We'll press yes to continue. And what this will do now is download the relevant prerequisites and it will install the HP controller software. Now, once again, rather than boring you watching an installation of software, I'm going to pause the video at this point and I'll restart the video once the software has been installed. The software is then set up. Configuration files are moved. Different parts of the prerequisites are installed. And at this point, the installation has completed. So we didn't get any error messages. So we can now verify that the controller software has installed. We'll use the command sudo dpkg hyphen l hpsdnctl. So the controller package and as you can see here, this name and this version of the HP Van SDN controller 
was specified to be installed and has been installed. So we want to see the two eyes to indicate a successful controller installation. And that's what we've got over here. We can now verify that the controller service is running by using the command sudo service sdnc status. So that's the controller core service. And we can see that a process is running. So the controller has now been successfully installed. Let's open up a web browser and connect to the controller. We're going to connect to the IP address of the controller, colon 8443 forward slash SDN forward slash UI. It might take a while for the controller services to start up. So if you're impatient, go to HTTPS IP address colon 8443. That shows me that I need to accept a self-signed certificate. And you should see something like this. So give it some more time to start up. And there we go. SDN UI is now available. And I'm going to log in as SDN with a password of Skyline. Now at the moment, it's not working. And that's because I need to configure a user on the local Keystone server. In previous versions of the controller, a local user of SDN and password of Skyline was created, but that doesn't happen in this version of the controller. So we have to tell it to run a script to create the username and passwords. So I'm going to run the script config local keystone, and let's try and log in again. So I'll refresh the page. And as you can see, I am now logged in to the controller. At the moment, we don't see any devices connected to the controller under OpenFlow Monitor or under OpenFlow Topology. In the next video, we'll download Mininet and integrate Mininet with the HP controller. That concludes this video. This is once again one of a series of videos discussing the installation and setup of the HP Van SDN controller. Please refer to HP's website for additional videos in this series. Thank you for watching.